Chapters twenty eight to thirty three, Book ten, Volume two of Le Mort d'Arthur. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Lars Rolander. Le Mort d'Arthur, Volume two, by Sir Thomas Mallory. Chapter twenty eight. Now turn we again unto Sir Tristram and to King Mark. As Sir Tristram was at jousts and at tournament, it fortuned he was sore hurt, both with the spear and with the sword, but yet he won always the degree. And for to repose him he went to a good knight that dwelled in Cornwall, in a castle, whose name was Sir Dinas le Seneschal. Then by misfortune there came out of Sesoin a great number of men of arms, and an hideous host, and they entered nigh the castle of Tintagel, and their captain's name was Elias, a good man of arms. When King Mark understood his enemies were entered into his land, he made great dole and sorrow, for in no wise by his will King Mark would not send for Sir Tristram for he hated him deadly. So when his counsel was come, they devised and cast many perils of the strength of their enemies, and then they concluded all at once, and said thus unto King Mark, Sir, wit ye well, ye must send for Sir Tristram, the good knight, or else they will never be overcome, for by Sir Tristram they must be foughten with all or else we row against the stream. Well, said King Mark, I will do by your counsel. But yet he was full loath thereto, but need constrained him to send for him. Then he was sent for in all haste that might be, that he should come to King Mark. And when he understood that King Mark had sent for him, he mounted upon a soft ambler and rode to King Mark. And when he was come, the king said thus, Fair nephew, Sir Tristram, this is all. Here be come our enemies of Sesoin, that are here nigh hand, and without tarrying they must be met with shortly, or else they will destroy this country. Sir, said Sir Tristram, wit ye well, all my power is at your commandment, and wit ye well, sir, these eight days I may bear none arms, for my wounds be not yet whole and by that day I shall do what I may. Ye say well, said King Mark, then go ye again and repose you, and make you fresh, and I shall go and meet the Sesoins with all my power. So the king departed unto Tintagil, and Sir Tristram went to repose him. And the king made a great host, and departed them in three, the first part led by Sir Dinas the Seneschal, and Sir Andred led the second part, and Sir Argus led the third part, and he was of the blood of King Mark. And the Sesoins had three great battles, and many good men at arms, and so King Mark, by the advice of his knights, issued out of the castle of Tintagel upon his enemies. And Dinas, the good knight, rode out afore, and slew two knights with his own hands, and then began the battles. And there was marvellous breaking of spears and smiting of swords, and slew down many good knights. And ever was Sir Dinas the seneschal the best of King Mark's party, and thus the battle endured long with great mortality. But at the last King Mark and Sir Dinas were they never so loath, they withdrew them to the castle of Tintagel with great slaughter of people. And the Sesoins followed on fast, that ten of them were put within the gates, and four slain with the portcullis. Then King Mark sent for Sir Tristram by a varlet, that told him all the mortality. Then he sent the varlet again, and bade him, Tell King Mark that I will come as soon as I am whole, for erst I may do him no good. Then King Mark had his answer. Therewith came Elias, and bade the king yield up the castle, for ye may not hold it no while. Sir Elias, said the king, so will I yield up the castle, if I be not soon rescued. 
Anon King Mark sent again for rescue to Sir Tristram. By then Sir Tristram was whole, and he had gotten him ten good knights of Arthur's, and with them he rode unto Tintagel. And when he saw the great host of Sessoins, he marvelled wonder greatly. And then Sir Tristram rode by the woods and by the ditches as secretly as he might, till he came nigh the gates. And there he dressed a knight to him when he saw that Sir Tristram would enter, and Sir Tristram smote him down dead, and so he served three more. And every of these ten knights slew a man of arms. So Sir Tristram entered into the castle of Tintagel. And when King Mark wist that Sir Tristram was come, he was glad of his coming, and so was all the fellowship, and of him they made great joy. Chapter 29 So on the morn Elias the captain came, and bade King Mark, Come out and do battle, for now the good knight Sir Tristram is entered, it will be shame to thee, said Elias, for to keep thy walls. When King Mark understood this, he was wroth, and said no word, but went unto Sir Tristram, and asked him his counsel. Sir, said Sir Tristram, will ye that I give him his answer? I will well, said King Mark. Then Sir Tristram said thus to the messenger, Bear thy lord word from the king and me, that we will do battle with him to morn in the plain field. What is your name? said the messenger. Wit thou well, my name is Sir Tristram de Lyonesse. Therewithal the messenger departed, and told his lord Elias all that he had heard. Sir, said Sir Tristram unto King Mark, I pray you give me leave to have the rule of the battle. I pray you take the rule, said King Mark. Then Sir Tristram let devise the battle in what manner that it should be. He let depart his host in six parties, and ordained Sir Dinas the seneschal to have the foreword, and other knights to rule the remnant. And the same night Sir Tristram burnt all the Sessoin's ships unto the cold water. And known as Elias wist that, he said, it was of Sir Tristram's doing. For he cast us that we shall never escape, mother's son of us. Therefore, fair fellows, fight freely to-morrow, and miscomfort you not, for any knight, though be he the best knight in the world, he may not have ado with us all. Then they ordained their battle in four parties, wonderly well apparelled and garnished with men of arms. Thus they within issued, and they without set freely upon them, and there Sir Dinas did great deeds of arms. Not for then Sir Dinas and his fellowship were put to the worse. With that came Sir Tristram and slew two knights with one spear, and then he slew on the right hand and on the left hand that men marvelled that ever he might do such deeds of arms. And then he might see some time the battle was driven a bow-draught from the castle, and some time it was at the gates of the castle. Then came Elias the captain rushing here and there, and hit King Mark so sore upon the helm that he made him to avoid the saddle. And then Sir Dinas gat King Mark again to horseback, Therewithal came in Sir Tristram like a lion, and there he met with Elias, and he smote him so sore upon the helm that he avoided his saddle, and thus they fought till it was night, and for great slaughter, and for wounded people, every party drew to their rest. And when King Mark was come within his castle of Tintagel, he lacked of his knights an hundred, and they without lack two hundred and they searched the wounded men on both parties. And then they went to counsel, and wit you well either party were loath to fight more, so that either might escape with their worship. When Elias the captain understood the death of his men, he made great dole, and when he wist that they were loath to go to battle again, he was wroth, out of measure. Then Elias sent word unto King Mark, in great despite whether he would find a knight that would fight for him body for body, and if that he might slay King Mark's knight, he to have the truage of Cornwall yearly, and if that his knight slay mine, I fully release my claim for ever. 
Then the messenger departed unto King Mark, and told him how that his lord Elias had sent him word to find a knight to do battle with him body for body. When King Mark understood the messenger, he bade him abide, and he should have his answer. Then he called all the baronage together, to wit was the best counsel. They said all at once, To fight in a field we have no lust. For had not been Sir Tristram's prowess, it had been likely that we never should have escaped. And therefore, sir, as we deem, it were well done to find a knight that would do battle with him, for he knightly proffereth. Chapter 30 not for then, when all this was said, they could find no knight that would do battle with him. Sir King, said they all, here is no knight that dare fight with Elias. Alas, said King Mark, then I am utterly ashamed and utterly destroyed, unless that my nephew Sir Tristram will take the battle upon him. Wit you well, they said all, he had yesterday overmuch on hand, and he is weary of travail, and sore wounded. Where is he? said King Mark. Sir, said they, he is in his bed to repose him. Alas, said King Mark, but I have the succour of my nephew Sir Tristram. I am utterly destroyed for ever. Therewith one went to Sir Tristram where he lay, and told him what King Mark had said. And therewith Sir Tristram arose lightly, and put on him a long gown, and came afore the king and all the lords. And when he saw them all so dismayed, he asked the king and the lords what tidings were with them. Never worse, said the king. And therewith he told him all how he had word of Elias to find a knight to fight for the truage of Cornwall, and none can I find. And as for you, said the king and all the lords, we may ask no more of you for shame. For through your hardiness yesterday ye saved all our lives. Sir, said Sir Tristram, now I understand ye would have my succour. Reason would that I should do all that lieth in my power to do, saving my worship and my life. Howbeit I am sore bruised and hurt. And sithen Sir Elias proffereth so largely, I shall fight with him, or else I will be slain in the field or else I will deliver Cornwall from the old truage. And therefore lightly call his messenger, and he shall be answered. For as yet my wounds be green, and they will be sorer a seven night after than they'll be now, and therefore he shall have his answer that I will do battle to mourn with him. Then was the messenger departed brought before King Mark. Hark, my fellow, said Sir Tristram. Go fast unto thy lord, and bid him make true assurance on his part for the truage, as the king here shall make on his part, and then tell thy lord, Sir Elias, that I, Sir Tristram, King Arthur's knight, and knight of the table round, will as to morn meet with thy lord on horseback, to do battle as long as my horse may endure, and after that to do battle with him on foot to the utterance. The messenger beheld Sir Tristram from the top to the toe, and therewithal he departed, and came to his lord, and told him how he was answered of Sir Tristram. And therewithal was made hostage on both parties, and made it as sure as it might be, that whether party had the victory so to end. And then were both hosts assembled on both parts of the field, without the castle of Tintagel and there was none but Sir Tristram and Sir Elias armed. So when the appointment was made, they departed in sunder, and they came together with all the might that their horses might run. And either knight smote other so hard that both horses and knights went to the earth. Not for then they both lightly arose and dressed their shields on their shoulders, with naked swords in their hands, and they dashed together that it seemed a flaming fire about them. Thus they traced and traversed, and hewed on helms and hauberks, and cut away many cantles of their shields, and either wounded other passing sore, so that the hot blood fell freshly upon the earth. 
and by then they had foughten the mountenance of an hour sir tristram waxed faint and forebled and gave sore aback that saw sir elias and followed fiercely upon him and wounded him in many places and ever sir tristram traced and traversed and went froward him here and there and covered him with his shield as he might all weakly that all men said he was overcome for sir elias had given him twenty strokes against one then was there laughing of the sesoin's party and great dole on king mark's party alas said the king we are ashamed and destroyed all for ever for as the book saith sir tristram was never so matched but if it were sir launcelot thus as they stood and beheld both parties that one party laughing and the other party weeping sir tristram remembered him of his lady la beale isoud that looked upon him and how he was likely never to come in her presence then he pulled up his shield that erst hung full low and then he dressed up his shield unto elias and gave him many sad strokes twenty against one and all to break his shield and his hauberk that the hot blood ran down to the earth then began king mark to laugh and all cornish men and that other party to weep and ever sir tristram said to sir elias yield thee then when sir tristram saw him so staggering on the ground he said sir elias i am right sorry for thee for thou art a passing good knight as ever i met with all except sir launcelot Therewithal Sir Elias fell to the earth, and there died. What shall I do? said Sir Tristram unto King Mark, for this battle is at an end. Then they of Elias' party departed, and King Mark took of them many prisoners, to redress the harms and the scase that he had of them. And the remnant he sent into their country to borrow out their fellows then was sir tristram searched and well healed yet for all this king mark would fain have slain sir tristram but for all that ever sir tristram saw or heard by king mark yet would he never beware of his treason but ever he would be there as la beale isoud was chapter thirty one now will we pass of this matter and speak we of the harpers that sir launcelot and sir dinadan had sent into cornwall and at the great feast that king mark made for joy that the sesoins were put out of his country then came eliot the harper with the lay that dinadan had made and secretly brought it unto sir tristram and told him the lay that dinadan had made by king mark and when sir tristram heard it he said o oh, lord jesu that dinadan can make wonderly well and ill there is it shall be sir said eliot dare i sing this song afore king mark yea on my peril said sir tristram for i shall be thy warrant then at the meet came in eliot the harper and because he was a curious harper men heard him sing the same lay that Dinadan had made, the which spake the most villainy by King Mark of his treason that ever man heard. When the harper had sung his song to the end, King Mark was wonderly wroth, and said, Thou harper, how durst thou be so bold on thy head to sing this song afore me? Sir, said Eliot, wit you well, I am a minstrel, and I must do as I am commanded of these lords, that i bear the arms of and sir wit ye well that sir dinadan a knight of the table round made this song and made me to sing it for you thou sayest well said king mark and because thou art a minstrel thou shalt go quit but i charge thee hie thee fast out of my sight so the harper departed and went to sir tristram and told him how he had sped then sir tristram let make letters as goodly as he could to launcelot and to sir dinadan and so he let conduct the harper out of the country but to say that king mark was wonderly wroth he was for he deemed that the lay that was sung afore him 
was made by Sir Tristram's counsel, wherefore he thought to slay him and all his well-willers in that country. Chapter 32 Now turn we to another matter that fell between King Mark and his brother, that was called the good Prince Budwin, that all the people of the country loved passing well. So it befell on a time that the miscreant Saracens landed in the country of Cornwall, soon after the Sessuans were gone. And then the good Prince Budwin, at the landing, he raised the country privily and hastily, and, or it were day, he let put wildfire in three of his own ships, and suddenly he pulled up the sail, and with the wind he made those ships to be driven among the navy of the Saracens, and to make short tale, those three ships set on fire all the ships that none were saved and at the point of the day the good prince budwin with all his fellowship set on the miscreants with shouts and cries and slew to the number of forty thousand and left none alive when king mark wist this he was wonderly wroth that his brother should win such worship and because this prince was better beloved than he in all that country and that also Bodwin loved well Sir Tristram, therefore he thought to slay him. And thus hastily, as a man out of his wit, he sent for Prince Bodwin and Anglides his wife, and bade them bring their young son with them, that he might see him. All this he did to the intent to slay the child as well as his father, for he was the falsest traitor that ever was born. Alas, for his goodness and for his good deeds, this gentle Prince Bodwin was slain. So, when he came with his wife's anglites, the king made them fair semblant till they had dined. And when they had dined, King Mark sent for his brother, and said thus, Brother, how sped you when the miscreants arrived by you? Me seemed it had been your part to have sent me word that I might have been at that journey for it had been reason that I had had the honour, and not you. Sir, said the Prince Bodwin, it was so that an I had tarried till that I had sent for you, those miscreants had destroyed my country. Thou liest, false traitor, said King Mark, for thou art ever about for to win worship from me, and put me to dishonour, and thou cherish that I hate and therewith he struck him to the heart with a dagger, that he never after spake word. Then the Lady Anglides made great dole and swooned, for she saw her lord slain afore her face. Then was there no more to do, but Prince Budwin was despoiled and brought to burial. But Anglides privily got her husband's doublet and his shirt, and that she kept secretly. Then was there much sorrow and crying, and great dole made Sir Tristram, Sir Dinas, Sir Fergus, and so did all knights that were there, for that prince was passingly well beloved. So La Bile Sud sent unto Anglides the Prince Bodwin's wife, and bade her avoid lightly, or else her young son Alexander le Orphelin should be slain. When she heard this, she took her horse and her child, and rode with such poor men as durst ride with her. Chapter 33 Notwithstanding, when King Mark had done this deed, yet he thought to do more vengeance, and with his sword in his hand, he sought from chamber to chamber to seek Anglides and her young son. And when she was missed, he called a good knight that hight Sadok, and charged him by pain of death to fetch Anglides again and her young son. So Sir Sadok departed, and rode after Anglides. And within ten mile he overtook her, and bade her turn again and ride with him to King Mark. Alas, fair knight, she said, what shall ye win by my son's death, or by mine? I have had over much harm and too great a loss, madam, said Sadok, of your loss is dole and pity. But, madam, said Sadok, would ye depart out of this country with your son, and keep him till he be of age, that he may revenge his father's death, then would I suffer you to depart from me, so you promise me to revenge the death of Prince Bodwin. Ah, gentle knight, Jesu thank thee, 
and if ever my son alisander le orphelin live to be a knight he shall have his father's doublet and his shirt with the bloody marks and i shall give him such a charge that he shall remember it while he liveth and therewithal sadok departed from her and either betook other to god and when sadok came to king mark he told him faithfully that he had drowned young alisander her son and thereof king mark was full glad now turn we unto anglides that rode both night and day by adventure out of cornwall and little and in a few places she rested but ever she drew southward to the seaside till by fortune she came to a castle that is called magoons and now it is called arundel in sussex and the constable of the castle welcomed her and said she was welcome to her own castle and there was anglides quite worshipfully received for the constable's wife was nigh her cousin and the constable's name was belanger and that same constable told anglides that the same castle was hers by right inheritance thus anglides endured years and winters till alisander was big and strong there was none so white in all that country neither there was none that might do no manner of mastery afore him end of book ten chapters twenty eight to thirty three read by lars rolander